Hello everybody, today I'm going to show you a tutorial related to electronics, specifically bipolar junction transistors or BJTs. Let's get down to it. Ok guys, before we finally start, I want to show the, the problem we are going to solve today. So you can see on the screen um, this circuit which looks a little tricky but it actually isn't. Ok, we know we have a voltage source of 4 volts. Uh, we know where IB is going. If you don't know what IB is, you should get to study. And we have another voltage source of 10 volts and two resistors. Okay, so let's redraw this circuit and and let me show you uh, over here that we have the our current IB. Okay, it goes this way, but. Do you know where the voltage of PE is? It's over here. Let's draw it. It's right. Voltage PE. And if you have studied, you know that voltage B is equal to 0 0.7 volts. Does that sound familiar? Maybe yes, because of silicon diodes, right? Okay. So how do we solve this? So it's where it's actually really easy. We're gonna start with a KBL, a Kirchhoff's voltage law. So, just like you would have you had learned in circuits one, you're gonna start with minus four plus two hundred and twenty thousand because we got a K over here times IB because that's the current of the base over here plus 0 0.7 which is the VVE volts this is equal to 0 so what we need to do is we need to solve for IB okay so we do that on the computer I'll show you in a second but first we are gonna do the other mesh this mesh over here okay let's do that we're gonna do another KBL. We might as well call it KBL number two, right? So, what where do we start? We know the core. We know the voltage of the CE that goes from collector to emitter goes from here, from here to here. All right. So that means our current is going this way. Okay. So. You're gonna start with minus 10 plus 2200 ohms because of the resistance times IC plus voltage of CE equals 0. Am I right? So when we get IC that we will in a second, we're gonna get PCE. Okay, so let's go on to our calculator to do that. Okay, so let's solve the first equation we calculated in the sheet of paper. So that's, that goes like this in this calculator. We write solve. Okay, and let's start with minus 4 times 220,000 times IB. Okay, plus 0 0.7 equals 0. Okay. And we want to solve for IB. And let me just save this value onto I so I can use it later without having to type the actual value of IB, which is really small, as you can see. That would be actually 15 microamperes. Okay, so we knew beta is 200, am I right? So if we want to calculate IC, we need to, to know beta and IB, which we do. So, let me just write I for this value times 200, which is beta, and let me just save this into IC and end. So, IC is a lot bigger than IB, in fact, 200 times bigger, am I right? Uh, okay, so we are going to calculate IE, and if you remember, IE is IB plus IC. So let's write that plus IE and enter. 
So if we multiply this times a thousand, just for the sake of science, we can say it's 3.015 milliamperes. Okay? So let's go back to the sheet of paper and write that down. Okay, guys, back in the sheet of paper, we're going really, really slow because this is only a tutorial. Just bear with me. So we know IP is 15 microamperes, or let's write it as times 10 to the minus 6 amperes. Okay? So we know IC is 3 milliamperes, right? Just like that, or 10 times 10 to the minus 3, and IE is going to be 3.015 milliamperes. So this means we can now solve with this value to get PCE. So let's go back again to the calculator to do that, and let's see what we get. Okay, guys, back at the calculator. You can see that I have rewritten these values so we can see them clearer in a much more uh, clean way other than this. So we're going to write our second equation. We write solve and minus 10 plus 2200 times IC okay, plus BCE equals 0 and we want to know BCE. Am I right? So let me just save this on B and see what we get. So BC is going to be 3.4 volts. Let's write it down on, a, on, the, on our paper and see what that means. So we know BCE is 3.4 volts. So what this means is that our transistor is operating as an amplifier. That means it is in active zone. Let's write it down active zone. So what determines whether our transistor is in active zone or not is if PCE is more than 0 0.2 volts, which is, okay? So this means we are working as an amplifier. Congratulations! So once again, this means it works in a linear active zone. Okay. Okay guys, so this video has come to an end. I hope you found the tutorial helpful, and if you have any further doubts, please refer to your teacher. This video has been made by me, Francisco Cruz, an automotive engineer for the course in electronics by Jose Isabel Gomez Quinones, who is known by his students to love Apple products. And that's why I'm gonna show you this video is about to be edited in iMovie. I called my project PJTs, maybe the final video won't be called like that, as you can see, but I have already inserted the image you saw earlier, okay? So, study hard, and see you in the next one. Peace.